All right, guys, so this one, we're going to do a little practice exercise called breaking the cube. So when you think about a lot of real world objects, like a locomotive for a train, a lot of times they're just big boxes, right? Or a soda machine, they're a big box. But what makes a soda machine a soda machine? The size and the, the details of it, right? The little extra shapes that go into it. Uh, so this applies to a number of different things. What makes a computer tower a computer tower? More or less a box. So this is how you get started with this. So um, first of all, if you're using vanilla Blender, uh, you're going to want to install the Bool Tools add-on. It comes with Blender. Just go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, Enable Bool Tools. And then under the options of Bool Tools, Enable Wireframe. It's helpful. Control shift b becomes your Bool Tool menu. It's a way to access it. All right. So if you want to use that, you can. Uh, I'm going to be using Hard Ops and Box Cutter quite a bit in this. But I'll talk about that as we go through the process. And um, so the cube here, uh, the default cube anyways, we're not going to do anything to it, but we're going to start working on it. So we select it, we go into edit mode, and what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to be using a lot of these selection methods, edge loops, edge rings, boundary loops, more or less. I put all these on my uh, mouse so I can use them quicker, but uh, usually they're just very simple, like control number pad plus or whatever it says here. Right? Oh, I might have modified all these, so these are different, but you might want to assign them to shortcuts. You can right click these, add them to shortcuts, all that fun stuff. So here's where it kind of gets started. You can do this. Uh, destructively or non-destructively it's really up to you but what we're going to do is uh, select the edges right so I'm using select rings here in this case and uh, control shift B we can do a chamfer something like this select an edge select rings now we can kind of repeat that process I'm going to use probably more edges than I care to use and uh, in this case I'm going to go with like uh, maybe six will work but uh, if you don't have the mesh machine add-on Mesh machine might allow you to go back and adjust these as far as counts go. You're not going to have that option unless you have that add-on. So these paid add-ons do actually really help out quite a bit. Uh, in this case, though, we did a manual bevel and we mouse wheeled up. So we got six segments. Change the shape to 0.7. It's going to save you um, a lot of headaches. You have to do this every time you do your first bevel. So just put them on. Loop slide, you may or may want to turn off as well. But usually mid or outer, you're going to change it to arc at some point as you're doing more and more bevels. You'll find that one to be quite useful. Okay. So with all that out of the way, uh, we have now broken this up just a little bit more. And it's starting to look a little more interesting, right? And that's what this video is about. It's just about breaking up this cube shape and making it more interesting. So I'm going to right click this shade at auto smooth. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start working on the top here. now. A couple things I want to want you to take away from this. I'm going to be using box cutter, and box cutter has the slice feature, right, or the um, slash boolean basically. And so what you might want to do instead is, if you're not using box cutter, you might want to create like a cube, uh, bring it up and scale it larger, or something like this. Okay, and you can see if I Alt Z, we can see through everything. Uh, but basically, this cube here, we're going to shift click, select this one, Control Shift B, we can do bool tools. All right, we have difference, unions, intersects, and slices. Um, and if we do a slice, you can see we can do this number right here like this. Okay? Um, and now we have an object here and an object here. And so you can work in this manner as well. So, you know, uh, just because I'm using hard ops or um, box cutter, it doesn't mean you can't find a workaround. But it's going to be a little bit more challenging, I think, than uh, using add-ons. So to keep that in mind, you, you may have to kind of play around with the different ways you can work with the different shapes and how they're all going to work together. But this shape here in the middle, believe it or not, you can see behaving as the same shape, right? But it's kind of not at the same time. So if I add a bevel here, it stays independent more or less, right? And so we just had a bevel modifier. So now we're kind of working non-destructively. Bump up the counts. We can set it to like eight, but I can do the same down here as well. Okay, let me see what's going on. All right, and slash boolean would do something very similar to this, but if I move this shape, the this one fine, but if I move this one, no, this doesn't move with it or nothing like that, right? This one. All right, so you might want to parent that to that one, maybe, or you might want to parent to this one, or have them both parented perhaps to an empty. So you can uh, press Shift A, create plain axis, uh, empty change the size of it if needed. And maybe you have everything parented to like a main uh, empty there that controls all of your shapes, right? Or your cutters and everything. Right? 
All right, so with that out of the way, just want to talk about those technicalities. Uh, right now, this Boolean shape doesn't have its own little collection. You may want to right click, create a new collection, just call it cutters. It can be helpful. Uh, give it a color, sure, you can do that. And then you, you'll have a cutters uh, folder or collection. You can press M and move to a new collection. I'm using an add on, but basically, you just move it to the cutters collection. It's going to happen there. Go back to collection here and keep working. So, if you're going to create more cutters, you might want to stay in cutters, right? Anyway, so we can keep going through this process. Here's the fun part about it is when you're using a bevel, right? We're using eight segments. And on this one, we're using eight segments. Um, this is where it gets interesting because you can start to do kind of like a stack modeling workflow. I talked about this in another video. It's really useful. But stack modeling, uh, basically this bevel, after you do a Boolean, you might want to do another bevel and so on and so forth. As long as you have enough edges to meet the angle threshold here, at 30 degrees right now um, and it smooth shades more or less basically what's going to happen is that uh, you won't have the newer bevels affect the older uh, boolean cuts with their bevels so it's actually pretty interesting uh, you'll see it uh, at play here in just a moment if you're using box cutter and you're following along with this one what's going to end up happening is um, i got some options change so first of all uh, i'm not auto hiding things i just turn it off because it's easier sometimes just to see the overall shapes and um it should be going into a cutters collection like that. But on the flip side, hard ops has an option here. Under here, here, Boolean. Uh, I parent the Boolean, I parent the bull shapes when I do the Booleans. Sometimes I'll use hard ops to Boolean. Sometimes I'll use the box cutter setup. Or sometimes I might even use bull tools still. Just depends. But generally speaking, your Booleans, I want to make sure the intersect is, um, well, Usually they use exact when you use uh, bull tools. Usually you want to use fast. That's kind of the little trick about it. So you actually need to maybe adjust that a little bit. Uh, when you're doing other things like using bevel modifiers, like say you were to max out a bevel. So like say I just uh, use bevel modifier. I change it to 0.7. You'll have to change the modifier here as well. 0.7, arc, all that fun stuff, right? And um, just bevel all the way, you'll see you get this result. Put the number of cuts up. Shade this auto smooth, you'll instantly notice it looks really nasty. This is because it really needs a weld modifier after all that. Weld modifier just merges the doubles. In the... Okay, so do keep those things in mind, you might run into them. But now we get the opportunity to go through here and make additional cuts and everything else. So we could use Boolean shapes to do that. I'm gonna start using box cutter though. It's faster, it's more efficient. And uh, you should definitely look into getting it because it's going to save you a ton of time. And you can see here, uh, we can just draw out a, a uh, shape, right? Box. Press one, two, something like that. Press G. We can move. We can hit Y or X or Z or whatever. Matter. Yes, it's Y. We do that number. So we did another Boolean cut, right? This Boolean cut is uh, basically it's got real sharp edges. You really don't want that if you're gonna try to bake this down to a lower poly at some point. You consider this something like a mid poly or a high poly. Uh, but uh, if you're wanting to bake this later on, you don't probably want that. To be honest. So anyways, what we're gonna do is we have the new Boolean. We can do another bevel with hard ops. We can hold control and it'll create a new 30 degree bevel. Let's see, we can actually do that right here, okay? Occasionally you'll get these little weird situations where the bevels just don't work out. You might have to tighten them up. I like to call this the creep, but it's uh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends. You're going to have to adjust for it. Otherwise, you're going to have to fix this up manually later on, and it's, uh, it's not always the uh, best of situations. Right? Anyways, I think that's going to work out just fine there for that in particular section. Oh, if for whatever reason you wanted to avoid that in a different manner, you take this whole edge here, or this whole face, all these edges around it, right? You could also bevel this manually. Um, mouse wheel up sufficiently enough so you can create a number of edges or segments. Okay, so let's use 16. And we'll see that um, that bevel that's on this, uh, this last bevel here, it doesn't take effect now because we've, meet, we've reached the 30-degree uh, angle threshold, right? So we might want to work in that manner. 
just like another workaround. It's a lot of little tweaks or, or little different things you can do with Boolean workflow that are uh, pretty awesome once you discover them, but it takes a little while to learn them all, right? And so these are all going into that cutters collection. I have an export collection that's in the way, but basically if you wanted to hide everything, you press one, hit uh, shift two usually. If it's the second collection, I got to hit shift three and it'll come back, right? So I can bring all those cutters back real quick. And they should all be parented to these shapes now, at least on my end. If you don't have um, box cutter and it doesn't have automatic parenting, so you can just parent one shape to another shape by um, selecting one, shift selecting the other, hit control P, doing a parent uh, keep object, keep transforming. I think it's over here too. I think there's parent option. Yeah, so when you right click, there's a menu well, if you want to do this. It's the same one, but it, Basically, parent object keep transform would be the uh, the best option there for you. You'd have to check it here though, right? So just keep that in mind. Two different options there. Control P probably works better. And so now we have the ability to go through this and uh, make adjustments and changes wherever we see fit. And we can certainly steel mesh. So in this case, I like the top polygon here. I want to just make it smaller. Uh, instead of doing like an inset and all that nonsense, uh, what you could do is you could separate this by hitting Shift D, duplicating it, right clicking, pressing P, separating the selection. A little bit fast, I know, but we got to get through this. So um, Shift D, duplicate it, right click so it stays in place, and then P, separate that selection. Go to object mode, select it. All right, uh, this is going to act like a new cutter, so we don't need all the booleans and bevels on it. We can get rid of all that. I'm also using an add on called modifier list if you're wondering what that is. And so you can and get that uh, free to download. So um, go ahead and down. So basically, I scaled it in, press E, extruded it in. The normals are backwards right now. If you don't see your normals backwards, because I have cavity on, um, you can also try using, I think, here, base orientation. So base orientation has a cool little trick to it. I'm going to show you real quick. Basically, the um, the blue faces are good, but if the normals are backwards, they would turn red. Generally speaking, the top, the top piece here, it's not happening. But this is a little bit distracting, though, having the blue everywhere. You can actually see there's like a little red line. Anyways, um, so you can actually turn that blue off by doing going to your theme. So if you wanted to go to your theme, the 3D viewport, you'll see that there's a face orientation back and face orientation front. You can turn this front one, the blue, alpha zero, right? This is something that somebody showed me. I thought it was pretty interesting. And so now, uh, if I had back face colon on or off, all of my backwards normals would show up as just red anytime I'm working. So if I press, you see this main shape here. If I grab this, go into edit mode, select it all, press alt N, I can recalculate outside, not show the errors no more, right? And uh, so that's good because now we can actually take this shape and it from this one so we can do a brush boolean difference basically if you're using bull tools right um, but hard ops you just do a boolean subtraction i'm using control number pad and uh, minus or plus or whatever so whatever the case is there whatever hard ops uses by default it's on the mouse already so. and bull tools would be on the mouse maybe i don't know and so i forgot here's the deal let's make this a little bit deeper so we grab this shape here uh, normally if it ends up hiding by accident you hit shift three bring all the cutters back if you need to um, you can also if you're using hard ops q e mouse wheel through different cutters so q and e like some key ever scrolls right you got that now i don't really care for that red marking it doesn't bother me that much to um I guess you gotta do it edit mode. So face orientation off and we'll back face cool on for myself anyway. That's what I prefer. So here's the deal. We have this set up now. Okay, Alt Z, I can select the bottom side of this. Whatever reason, I guess you can't select through wireframes. Sometimes you can, sometimes it's weird. Anyway, so we're just gonna push the bottom here down in edit mode. Okay. Do it about there. So we have a couple options here. We could bevel now like this. 
to do the bottom if we wanted to. Uh, or we could do it, let it happen on the main shape. Sometimes it's better to do it on the main shape. Sometimes it's better to do it on the actual uh, cutter. But it really just depends on what, what you're working on. But one thing you do want to make sure you do is probably still use more segments than you think you should. It's going to make sure or ensure that you hit that angle. A good way to tell is just by using uh, Shade Auto Smooth. Right? Shade Auto Smooth and then use Normals Auto Smooth. Right? So when you have all of your objects here, just Shade Auto Smooth everything. Um, they're all set to 30 degrees. You should be able to see any problem, right? They shouldn't be shading. Hard edge. Press one. We can see in here now that this is a hard edge on top. That's because the boolean took effect there. Okay, so we can press uh, add a new bevel. Hold control. That bump that segment count up. We can adjust that uh, pretty heavily. You know, not too bad. Twelve segment or something for now. You'll see sometimes you get like weird little squirrely uh, corners like this. That's usually loop slide. Sometimes you want loop slide, sometimes you don't. So turn it off sometimes, keep it on sometimes. It's not uh, so. Uh, but you now you're in the process of breaking up the cube. So this is pretty much, like, it's just a good little practice exercise. You can just keep going through this process over and over, making little finer adjustments. You can do rates, you can do all kinds of fun stuff like that. You know, you just keep working it basically some point you might cut out the bottom section here to create a lid and then cut out the inside of this but you might have to collapse your bevels and bullions as well along the okay. it's best to try to not collapse these until the last possible moment if you have to you have to but sometimes it's just better to keep working non-destructively right and so i'm going to go ahead and cut a little section here real quick like that taper this in like this pull it down so I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna edit mode pull this up I was going to mirror this and I didn't do it yeah so I'm gonna use mesh machine to do a quick symmetrize alt X you'd have to use a mirror modifier and set it to bisect Cross X, but I want to mirror across this. I'm gonna use mesh machine or machine. No, your control shift X by default. I set it to all X too, like that, right? But basically, you know, if this bothers you. You could control X, to get rid of it. These little corners here. Maybe, maybe you wanted to bevel these manually. You could do that. It probably would have been better better to bevel it before we um, try to taper it or something. Maybe. But it depends on how you want to work the mesh. So let's go ahead and let's look at it. Let's do a regular bevel on it. So these inside corners, I don't really care for when they're like that. So yeah, it didn't work out the way I thought it would or the way I wanted it to. I'm just going to uh, that out a bit. Get rid of that bevel. I'm going to go ring select those, bevel these. I don't probably need that many sides. I think 12 will work in this case, but we'll probably bevel this. Usually you want to keep these on even numbers. Let's use mesh machine. We're doing it. Mesh machine has the, has the fuse feature, right? So when you're fusing, you might want to uneven them. At least I think that's what it was last time I checked. But on for a second let's bevel this one now. a little less here you could use the exact same amount or really whatever you want you can see another boolean do another bevel it'll only be influencing this area and you see some other areas are getting affected so bump this up to six real quick this area over here is being influenced now and I'm going to take a wild guess. That's because this was the bevel. I think. Yeah. We need to bump up the segments here, though. More than likely. If not, we might need to turn loop slide off. 
If we still have an issue, we're going to have a little bit more trouble trying to figure out what's going on here. It might actually might not actually be a fault of this particular uh, bevel. It could be something else going on here. So, Boolean itself is set to fast. It's cutting all the way through the mesh. We're still issue. All right, so the main issue might be the um, cutter. Does it have a uh, level on it? All right, let's see if we can figure this one out then. It's definitely going crazy. Could be a, another bevel behind it, perhaps. This one slides messing up 30 degrees. It might be the wrong angle. Sometimes you create the wrong angle. Sometimes you just got to bump things up. Sometimes it's bad triangulation. So sometimes you're going to have to run into these issues where you really have to kind of problem solve things, right? Otherwise, it goes crazy. Now, I don't see the in particular problem right now. So that's kind of annoying, actually. I'm driving me nuts a little bit. Definitely the last one's doing it. So I'm going to go through the bubbles real quick. Okay, so maybe it's not tight enough on one or the other. Maybe it's too tight. And I'm breaking the angle. All right, so. Bump it back a little bit. It could be a little bit touchy. Sometimes you got to enter values here. I'm going to talk about those values in just a moment. Um, kind of interesting how Blender works. Smaller increments. So that fix it. it was just too much bevel for that particular. Intersecting with itself. So then, a bit of an issue. This one here, we can also probably just. Oops, I didn't grab it all apparently. Yeah, it's going to take a little while to get used to doing this. But anyway, so um, here's here's one of the main problems you might run into. Is that when you're adjusting things, you can see these are really, really low values, right? And uh, that could be a little bit problematic because you need more sensitivity to these, these values and you can't do that. In Maya, you have like the little wheel that lets you kind of readjust the sensitivity for each bevel or whatever the case may be. And so uh, we don't have that here in Blender, but instead uh, there's not like a real serious uh, fix for it necessarily. Um, when you go to this tab here, you can adjust your units. If you change the unit system or you change the unit scale, uh, everything's going to be out of proportion and crazy here inside of Blender. So if you ever had like characters that were a certain size, you change the unit scale. Well, now you're really toast because um, this thing will be off in this blender scene compared to all your other blender scenes really messed up so what ends up happening is you can't get away with changing the length values though you change these down to uh, millimeters if you wanted right and when you change it to millimeters uh, now you'll notice that when you're adjusting these properties you see we got 0 0.001s right for millimeters perhaps on that one well that's not getting exactly but we got 3.55 so you're still not going to be able to click in here and then say like hold shift and be able to um, drag this um, any slower like it's basically the same setup it's not really that much slower um, but what it does offer you the ability to do is now at least instead of having like point whatever whatever 355 or whatever the case right point zero three five five, and then all those five fives or whatever disappearing you can see them now but uh, here's here's where it gets fun. You can actually just do it. Eight. You have more control, basically, right? So you'll be able to enter a more accurate value, and you won't be so um, stuck, basically, with those larger meter increments. So here we go. I mean, I know you could type in point zero zero. This is just, in my opinion, nice. So here's where we can go with this now, all right? We have this shape here. We can also go ahead and start uh, layering. Now this is gonna be pretty important. So uh, we can do this shape here. I'm gonna do a Boolean across it like this, right? So it's gonna go all the way across. I could have laser cutted that by double clicking, but we can do this, okay? Click. You can see it's already beveling that shape I just cut it. Bevel's too big, so we got to go back to the bevel. 
tweak it, adjust it. I'm not sure which one's doing. One of these. It's on the main shape, actually. Right? So, we're selecting this top section here, this main shape. Because we adjusted some of these, but uh, instead of tightening this up, I think we'll be better off beveling it ourselves. I kind of want it to be around there on the edge. We'll tighten it up a little bit. Don't want to get into the habit of like creeping these values back, but the thing is that if I bevel this manually, I may get what I want out of this. Okay. My mouse will up quite a bit. See if that works. Gonna kind of stop it basically. Trying to do more. Yeah, angle limits really having a fit. Kind of works here, doesn't work down there. They don't have that big of a problem with that one. Let's see. Let's tighten this one up. All right, so there we go. We got, got that one tightened up now. We're gonna pull this one down. It, perhaps yeah we're gonna have to adjust this bevel here it's intersecting with itself unfortunately this corner I don't think that's gonna work for it back it off for now we can try to play with around with the values later and see if we could get it back the way it was but we can definitely just keep going um, with this one here we can't work it in a little bit better. I think ultimately this is the boolean here. This boolean shape, right? We're doing a boolean here. I think we need a bevel after it. I think that's ultimately going to solve that little corner issue. It looks like it's going to. Not yet. The number of cuts. We'll play with that here. We'll tweak these values. So I want that one to be a lot tighter, right? This main one that we were adjusting and making it tighter, I want it to be a lot looser. If I can get a hold of it. Yeah. It's a little confusing, right? Uh, but basically what's going on, because we've been zoomed out the whole time, is that the main shape here, and just keep in mind, we're working with the, the top, right? And then we have this cutter, and then we have this cut and this cutter. Okay, so it's a little bit of a uh, brain twister, I guess, if you will. But the main shape overall is controlling this top one, I think. Okay, so that's controlling the top one. This one here is being controlled, controlling this one. So this this main cutter, and then the cutter that's cutting the cutter is controlling this one, right? So we're able to go through these and kind of go back and forth and adjust and tweak things. Just notice the corner and how it's starting to like intersect with itself, basically. Um, if you turn off the wireframe, this is probably more or less what we're uh, gonna be looking at here. You can see like there's some things that may be happening right, some things may be happening wrong. Uh, we can tweak it a little bit by moving things just slightly, perhaps. I'm not exactly sure why we're getting this um, big drawn out hidden section of mesh here. I don't know if I collapse the mesh right now, if that would actually continue to occur. I don't suspect it would, but maybe it would. So sometimes these need manual cleanup later on, perhaps, um, but trying to avoid any kind of like major issue like that might be the most begin with so I'm gonna hide this one real quick. I'll hide all of them actually. See tweaking these values can give me a to Okay. Yeah that's, so that's gonna generate an error base. That's what's gonna do. Really shouldn't be. I think the main reason why it will is because it needs supporting geometry to kind of stop that from occurring. So I'm gonna try something where I just you see we go all the way back over to there. Uh, we could just use a, sh a cutter for this, or we could use a slice or the knife one, right? Use a non-destructive cutter for this. 
probably a better idea anyway. But we want to do this on maybe both on both of these. This one cut or slice. Probably should have mirrored it. So you can also mirror the slice, right? Press um in this case I don't know. I should press only one of those. Really laggy for some reason. All right, so we just do the slice like that. And that cuts the main shape now. Let's see if that problem uh, persists or if it went. Oh, the main shape had, a, I didn't solve it, but it persists. So try that on the cutter as well. Uh, we could do this technically if we just um, hit sh shift and do or whatever and bring back all of our cutters. Try that again. One. If you hide everything by accident, just hit one. Right? Shift three. Or shift two in here. And so I might want to use this same cutter though. I just did that slice. I don't know if it's still available to me. <laughs> Maybe it's just a permanent slice. I, didn't know, I never noticed that before. Yeah, it appears to be permanent. Huh? Okay. How do we get away with uh, doing that non destructively? Wrong. All right. So just go to this one here, this object. We can just press KCA then. You do a knife cut uh, right in front of it. It's pulling the issue to that little triangle. So. If I had to take a guess, it's just trying to triangulate wrong. Loop slide might not be helping it here. And some of these bevels might have loop slide on her quite a bit. Sometimes you want loop slide though. It's really on you. Okay, so I just don't, I don't think that's going to cut it right there. Huh? And it's really a misalignment of these edges, I think. So like this bevel, this main bevel that was adjusting that, you can see, really wants to be above it. Sometimes you can get it to work below it. Thing. Guess we're not going to get away with that one today. Thought we would. Perhaps that's not going to do it. No additional segments are helping there either. So our last ditch effort here is the main this cut shape. You can see when we move it over here, it kind of works. Down here, it works. Maybe there's too many segments. Sometimes you can back segments up or down, and it might help. Sometimes it doesn't. So I think we'll be all right with just 12 here. Anyway. But yeah, there you go. A lot of pain, but. Tweaking it down a little helps a little bit, perhaps. We'll go with that then. All right, so that's an ideal situation where you just, you know, sometimes you got to sacrifice accuracy, get clean results so you don't have to mess with it later. But in reality, if you really needed this up here, you're going to be doing quite a lot of cleanup, but you might need it. And you'll have to do a heck of a job cleaning this up manually, effectively later on. But Basically, you can see when these shapes move, these intersect, like this edge cuts into here. And then it, it's just going to do that over and over and over again. And so you can manually clean these up later, but just try to match them if, as best as possible, the, de the densities of each other, right? So, like, you can adjust segments. And maybe we, if we can get away with less in that area to match that one, that's a good idea. Not going to hurt one bit if you're going to create a low poly from this. That is, if it's a high poly, you know, just do whatever you want as long as bake correctly. It needs to be like good mesh, but not, not as many uh, 
required things about uh, modeling, I guess. We'll go with that, but yeah, there you go. You got now this happening here. We're going to take this uh, shape and mirror it across this one. Yeah, this one in the middle, bisect it. So now we're breaking up the cube, guys. This is what we're doing. We're slowly turning this into basically um, a more complicated mesh at this point. Okay? We're able to of that get a lot more interesting that's really the big takeaway here kind of a designer exercise you come through here and figure out what's going to work i just want this on one side i don't mirror it over there right camphor here this is bullion into the main shape So if I bevel this, that's not going. There are ways to bevel like this non-destructively, but it's kind of maniacal in my opinion to do that. Um, basically, you create a cube and then you create like another opposing cube that creates that cut and then you bevel the inside of it. It's just um, too much work in my opinion. I'd rather just manually bevel these because with mesh machine, you can always fuse option there the refuse option you just go through and mouse wheel through this if needed later on generally speaking as long as you got really super boolean workflow going on it's not a big deal. but now if, if i wanted to i can just grab area mouse wheel through. got another little level of detail here this should be on the base shape right so you can see the last boolean here boom that's a union boolean, right? So uh, we can go ahead and add a uh, bevel behind that. And just mouse wheel it up appropriately. Combine the two shapes together. You'll notice that it's not combining with the top, though, right? Top doesn't recognize it at all. Um, so sometimes you might be able to get away with that, but this bevel. Get rid of it for just a moment. This boolean, I mean, we might have to move it all the way to the top. I don't know if that's going to help it, but there, perhaps. I'll do it. Oh, I don't think it's doing it. <laughs> all right, let's put it back where it was. Bottom, so control is back real quick. Sometimes you could select the shape and um, you can actually. Union it to the other one here, so you can just that might work. Uh, I'm not going to guarantee that's going to work very well. The main shape up here, when you do, and you probably do want to put the, put this one back toward the top here somehow because you're going to need to figure out how to slice it or something. There's so many little issues when you start doing Boolean workflow that you can accidentally run. This kind of stuff can, um, trying to do it non-destructively, can certainly throw you for a loop. It throws me for a loop, too. So It's just, they're both using it, but I don't think it's that beneficial. Get rid of it for a sec. I'll probably, I'd say later on, I'll probably just cut it at the top, and then uh, I'll just union this top section into this one, and do a bevel for it. Probably be the easiest way to do it, right? Not maybe there's another easier way. I'm just pulling workflow as a I should be, but get the idea. So yeah, you can just go through this whole thing and just making cuts and additional changes and little elements here or there. You can steal geometry, you can steal parts and pieces. You know, so duplicate something. Be careful with the duplications as you get too many bevels and pull-ins and stuff on it. You gotta get rid of all of them before you can use it, right? So that can accidentally cause some problems as well. But the fun part about it is that because we oh no. <laughs> we we didn't duplicate? Oh we did duplicate and uh uh 
I'm gonna screw that up, guys. And uh, it's I didn't separate or something. What's going on? A duplicate. D separate selection. There you go. Try that. Uh, this can all go now. It's gonna look weird. Make sure you always do that though. All right, so let's see if that I got it this time. Somehow I didn't screw it all up. Okay. All right, so let's keep going. I just want to have these positioned somewhere in the middle. Yes, but position them where you wherever you want. And so this might be a fun one to do. I like to just Alt S a little bit and move it out a tiny bit. And then uh, I'll do an inset and hold control, push it in. All right. So I got to select it all, Alt N, recalculate the normals outside. Alt N, recalculate outside. You can see what's going on here. There's no back face here. It needs to be a solid shape. So I'm going to press F, 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 F. Yeah, you get there. So yeah, we can use this as a cutter basically. We can select. This shape, this shape, and then do a difference, right? Potentially. QE real quick, bring it back. Um, the reason it's not working is because this little edge exists. It needs to really be slightly off from that. Edge. But we could center to the geometry here. It's not a big deal. Shift S with machine tools. Uh, put the object origin to geometry. like an array try going on there we go so here we got some pattern going on now starting to see where this is going in my non-destructive workflow basically i might have to actually manually select these ones I've got too many additional edges can't do that ring selection and go ahead and do this I may even bevel this before Boolean. Right though. So let's not do that before. Let's go to the Boolean here. Shape. Bevel. Uh oh. Again, we're not getting no play out of that one. That's for sure. All right. In a rare instance where I cannot get anything to agree with what I want to do. This is obviously the bevel. Do the bevel, hit control, click. Oh, it worked. Sort of. Oh, yeah. See how it's still crossing in here? That's the uh, edges here. We're, we didn't bevel them enough, apparently. So it's hitting that angle. So we got to go back to right here. Bevel, add more segments. Just this, maybe a little bit tighter on this one. Okay. Now the main shape, re-add the bevel. Hold shift, drag it very carefully. Oh, it's all over the place. Not that one. Control. Up. Oh. Eight. A lot of segments to have on that coin. You have to use it to hold it, and then you gotta use it pretty much. You can always lower these for if you create this as a low poly later on. You go through and just loop select every other one and dissolve them. You got it's gonna take a little while to clean it up, but it's totally worth it sometimes. So you take this main shape as well, and we can mirror it across here using the tools. Now we got some pattern going. It's pretty important, believe it or not, because pattern, um, you know, it builds visual interest to things rather quickly. So you do definitely want to try to build up pattern whenever. I personally don't care for these big chunks being taken out of the side here. So this is where your design kind of ideas come to the forefront. If uh, something just looks weird to you, just 
Don't keep running with it. Like this whole area, I just did a loop cut, beveled it. I'm going to press X, delete the faces. All right. That should leave two open edges here. I can press uh, F, like this one, with holding click, selecting the F. And now we got two closed edges. And some of the normals apparently turn backwards. No. Cut. This is the optical illusion for what I was looking at. All right, so there we go. We have something a little bit more interesting than what we once had, right? And so you can run with this idea all over the place. Create this kind of setup or whatever, but you know you still have the option to add more cuts, do additional edits. It's, this is a really good starting point, basically, to add all the other little things you want to do all over this. That's really not that bad. So, and then you can make like this hinge with some hinge on it on one side or the other, whatever. Make this side different than the back side, and round and round you go. You'll before you know it, you're creating cool stuff, right? making crates and whatever trains so anyways that's it for this one i hope you enjoyed checking out this little process here of working this way you know it could take some time to get used to it it's a little bit challenging to learn but it's fun and breaking the cube up is just a great exercise to really stretch your your muscles you know when it comes to designing like there's little surface details that you might change that just you never really think about what's a soda what makes a soda machine a soda machine um, a computer a computer it's just the little tiny details in the surfaces and a little bit of the edge from the way the edges are laid out or maybe it's a secondary kind of shape cut into the primary shape not big changes usually just really minor small changes all over little accents to the uh, overall shape so when you're forced to break up that cube you know and then you do it again and think about how you can make it look different in a, in a much more different respect, you know, entirely different object. Think about how scale plays a role. And um, But then as you play with this idea, at some point you're going to realize that, well, like you're making other things that are cubed, perhaps. Like here's a maybe a soda machine, right? But what do you know? If you were making a building, it would be in something of a cube. But sometimes buildings are skyscrapers. They're like even larger cubes. You know? Next thing you know, you'll skyscraper, yeah, a larger cube on top of it. So, see where the cubes go. If they can scale, this process scales up very dramatically, very quickly. So if you stuck around for this whole video, I saved that for the last little bit of it. But now you're looking at con compound shapes, more or less. But they're still cubes. They're just intersecting each other, right? So that's kind of what's going on down here. So basically a cube with a, maybe a cube intersecting this. More or less a cube. So as you play with this idea, it'll help you with the larger ideas as well. And then before you know it, you'll realize that, you know, cubes exist everywhere in real life. So you might have a building that has different cubes on the side of it that create the facade of the building. Okay, right? things like that. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of a bad example maybe, but things like that happen all the time, right? So the compound shapes are important, but being able to do each one of these uh, compound shapes, knowing how they work individually, can lead to you creating a more complex structure with compounds much easier. That's all I was getting at, anyways. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I will check you guys out in the next one. Uh, take care, all right?